right? Because right. inherently we know peace and love and joy and kindness and meekness. Every human knows that's a just life, right? And every human wants to feel peace and love and joy and kindness and meekness and patience, right? Right, And they want to feel it all the time. That's yeah. why we get upset when we don't feel it. Yes. Right? So right. the old man is the man that thinks by the strength in his own hand, he's going to gather life to himself from the good in the world. And by the good in the world, he can gather to himself that will serve him with peace and love and joy. So then from that context, your definition, which is really good, what would it mean then to die to self? Would be to see that that old man is a futile way of life and to see that the only way unto life is through the Father. Right. So you, I know the religious terms dying to self, yeah. right? I get that. It, really what you could say is that in being crucified with Christ, you're becoming alive to yourself. <laughs> actually dead to the world right yeah, dead, dead to, the, to world. the world right yeah because you were never created to live by your own hand yeah. you were never created to look to the strength in the world or the strength in your own flesh to gather life to yourself right so it's in becoming dead to that way and when it's in becoming divorced from that way of life that you're actually becoming a lot yeah. right you're dead to sin and alive to god mm -hmm. right and so dying to self means that you aren't walking in the world trying to gather life to yourself anymore. Right. You're not walking in the world trying to preserve your own life. You're not walking in the world trying to justify yourself with peace and love and joy. Right? right. You're not looking to justify your life with the things in the world. That's right. what that's what dying to self right. would be. And until you get to that point, until you are <laughs> crucified, I think what this what this statement really is saying, just in different terms, is until you get to the point where you realize that you need to die to self, you you may be filled with the Spirit just by virtue of your salvation experience, but the life of Christ is not evident in you. Or well, you're not experiencing then you go. the right. life of Christ. Right. You're not experiencing it. <laughs> and that's what we see uh, Paul say in Galatians. Christ has become of no effect right. unto you. Yes. Right? Because right. you're seeking to be made justified through the strength of the flesh. Yes. He's not talking about they're not going to go to heaven one day. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about them experiencing the fruit of the Spirit. Right. Right? He's right. talking about how he was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he lives. But the life he lives in the flesh, he lives by the faith that was revealed in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Meaning, Jesus didn't look to his own hand for life. Right. Jesus didn't look to the strength in the world for life. Jesus laid down the life he could gain from the world because he saw the life that was in the Father's hand. He saw the Father's hand stretch forth towards him to gift him the life, right, that he wanted. Yeah. And so he laid it down, yeah. right? And that's, yeah. that's what Paul's talking about. The Galatians, he put Christ clearly on display in their midst, Christ crucified. But they went away and they were deceived into thinking that they could now be justified through the strength of the flesh. Right. Right. By getting circumcised in the flesh of their foreskin. So they were identifying with the old man. You could say it that way. Sure. Right. If you behold your life in the world, that will keep the life of Christ from manifesting in you. Why? Why will it keep the fruit of the Spirit from manifesting in you? Because the world can't father peace and love and joy. No. The world can't father rest. The world can't father patience or meekness. It can't father uh, long suffering. It can't father love. It can't father any of those things. So if the life you're identifying with is the life in the world, you're essentially calling the world your father. Yeah. Right? Well, right. if you're looking to the world to be the father of your life, well, the world can't father the life of God. Mm -hmm. So you're going to not experience the father's life as you're walking in this world. Right? right? That's right. what Paul's talking about. You guys aren't experiencing the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. Another way of putting it is, uh, let's say a woman was in a, an abusive relationship. Uh, she was a battered wife. And then she got divorced. And then her first husband died in an automobile accident. And then she got remarried to a wonderful guy who met all her needs. And she's still living like she's married to the first guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Because mm -hmm. she's haunted oh, by it. the memories of her pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yes. this second, uh, her second husband just wants to comfort her. But she's uh, been abused. And so she's not getting to experience all the benefits of this new marriage. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's very good. 